For the start of this lecture, we're going to talk about hill slopes in a lot more detail. What we're going to do is to spend several shorter clips going through the set of notes that I've written on hill slopes and hill slope processes, and that's going to take us from where we've been, discussing the more kind of qualitative processes that act on hill slopes, to bring that into the quantitative realm and starting to create sets of differential equations that we can use to predict and um, estimate how hill slopes have evolved through time in the past and how they might evolve into the future. We're going to do this in several shorter chunks, and that's for a couple reasons. The first one is because pedagogical research shows that if we break this up into smaller pieces that are kind of bite-sized and digestible, that's actually going to help knowledge retention and attention in general during them. The second reason is a little bit more selfish. It means that I don't have to go through sitting here for two hours as I feel my 34-year-old back get stiffer and also increase the chance that I'm going to make some minor mistake that's going to cause me to have to go through and re-edit this whole thing. So with that in mind, we're going to talk about uh, hill slopes. So this first diagram here shows some of the processes that act on hill slopes and some of the um, symbols that are used, at least by the people making this figure. Um, these are pretty common symbols, so Z is going to be elevation. Ooh, I went to lime green. Let's take this back to a neutral blue. Z is going to be elevation. Q is typically used for discharge per unit width. And what I mean by width is width that's going into or out of the page. And so if you guys remember from math, physics, wherever you learn this, is that if you think about this, it's like an arrow. We have an arrow here. There's the arrow head at the front of it. And here are the fletchings at the end of it. And it's a strange square fletched arrow. Um, so with four different feathers at the back, and so you're seeing the feathers when it's going into the board, and you're seeing just the point when it's coming back out of the board. And by board, obviously, I mean the PDF, the computer screen, the thing that we're all looking at. Um, and so here it's also showing some processes. So here's a tree, and here's a tree falling over and creating this hole right here. And this mountain of soil, it's moved down slope, right? So what we have is some amount of transport of material, I'm going to denote it with Q, or as I do later in the lecture, Q sub M. And that is this idea about material moving downhill, down slope. And so this is just a schematic diagram of a hill slope, and it's going to kind of start us thinking about how we are um, observing, observing hill slopes, what kinds of processes might occur. And one thing I want you to note is that up in the top of the hill, this is really thin. And this is the regolith, so that's the material that's weathering in place from the bedrock. Meanwhile, if we go down to the bottom of the hill, this regolith right here, this is really thick. So what is it that's related to either these transport processes, these weathering and um, soil production processes that might be causing all of this, uh, this material to move and to have different thicknesses. And when I say soil production, that's a little bit of a shorthand. It's not necessarily soils in the true soil sense, although that's what the function is often called, but we can call it a regolith production fu function. So producing this regolith, this material that is removed in place from the bedrock. And I have a few major learning objectives, and I think it's important to go over these. So the first thing I want is for you to learn the state of the established science and how masses move down hill slopes and as well as some of their limitations. And so there are a couple of major ways in which this happens. The first one is gradually via soil creep and this is a diffusive process which means, spoiler alert, we're going to be solving a diffusion equation. If you don't know what that is, that this is one of perhaps the most commonly found um, differential equations, partial differential equations in all of natural world observations. It's common across heat transfer for mass transfer, you know, chemistry, biology. Um, it's just a good thing to know in general. And so we're going to introduce it in terms of hill slopes and talk about why it ends up being such a common equation that we see everywhere. 
We'll also talk about sudden failures, and this is related to mass wasting processes. And so you can think about this as a you know landslide, a, a uh, rockfall, and this is related to typically brittle failure of the hill slope in mass. And if there are those of you here who have taken, for example, um, some, a solid mechanics course in something like a civil engineering department, um, where you analyze you know statics and you know potential for failure, if you've taken soil mechanics, or if for the geologists in the room you've taken structural geology, this might um, look a little bit familiar. So we're going to be talking about more Coulomb style failure in this section. After that, we're going to derive the diffusion equation. Um, as I mentioned, and this is a very universal um, partial differential equation. And from that, we're going to learn why many hills have rounded tops. So we can actually use the solutions to these differential equations, or this differential equation rather, to um, actually do a curve fit. And we're not doing something that sort of you have to measure in some fancy way, like um, you know, temperature through a beam or uh, chemical concentrations. No, 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 we can just go out in the landscape and literally observe hills with our eyes. And that's one of the beautiful things about geomorphology is that you can see the mathematics playing out right in front of you. And after that, we're going to go into the more Coulomb failure potential. So those are the overall learning de um, objectives. And I just want to bring up a couple important definitions. So the first important definition is a process that is steady. And what that means is that the process is constant in time. So all time derivatives go to zero. So anything... Yep, See, there we are. So anything that is has a d over dt of whatever, this goes to zero if steady. Likewise, uniform is a spatial um, component, is a spatial, I guess, uh, correlative to that. So then we just do d over dx sub i, where this just means in any spatial direction. And then that of anything will go to zero if uniform. These two definitions are really important to remember. Um, they are just definitions. There's nothing fancy about them. There's nothing magical about those words. But this is commonly used across landscape dynamics, across fluid mechanics, that steady processes mean that there are no changes in time. Uniform processes mean that there are not changes in space. All right, so from this, we're gonna wrap up with this quick intro. And after this, we're gonna go into, as you can see, different causes for downslope motion of soil or other mobile material.